luxury fit. Nerd level will be activated. But for a what? What is this? So we each have to choose an iconic fashion house. <laughs> it's kind of nice on McDonald's. So we have to create a fit solely on their garments. Yeah, this looks mad. Damn, I'm a rainbow. Yo, I love backpacks. Looks a bit big for you. I know. From this moment on, PAQ is not educational. It's not entertainment, mm -hmm. it's educational. It is now going oh to be God, involved yes. in school. So now, when you guys are in college and you guys have to actually like watch these boring ass documentaries, tell your teachers to put on PAQ instead and you'll learn a whole lot more. Facts. PAQ is for the kids, for the system. Woo. Facts. What's that? Get, get Ofsted. Is it Ofsted? Yeah. Get Ofsted to verify us, bro. You didn't hear the one from me, girls. PAQ presents Lux Life. Welcome back to PAQ, we're a fashion show that drops videos every single Thursday and for this month only Sundays too. I'm Elias. I'm Dexter. I'm Shaquille. I'm Danny. And I'm Katrin, aka Danny's my soulmate. We've got a real life meme page in the building. <laughs> so it's the first ever meme account. Some of the first time we saw it, we were landing back on a flight from Berlin. Turns out it's buddy Katrin all the way from Austria. Yeah. Obviously, you have to get her on the show while you're in London. I just kind of thought, what's a funny thing to do? Just like um, the most random thing, just create a meme page for a fashion show, which is kind of absurd. Thank you, Katrin, for coming down to the Bond Show. Uh, you know, sitting here with us, you are the OG official pack meme page. Thanks so. for having me. Bring it in. Link you. Oh, you're so small. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know who we are, we are an online fashion show. They get some madness, like sometimes we create fake Gucci shoes. Imagine into the Gucci loafers. Sometimes we wear fake Gucci bags. And the bag was five pounds. But it's real Gucci, isn't it? And sometimes we just wear fake Gucci. So you guys want to be turning your notification bells on and the reason for that being you guys want to be the first comment because the first commenter gets a lovely tote bag. I know Oprah gives you guys in the audience a car, so we thought we're going to up it and give you guys two tote bags instead of one. This was the first comment on the last episode. I'm about to pull it out for you guys, real special right now. Here it is. Magic. Yeah. This week, we are each choosing a high-end designer and we have to create a full fit solely using that designer. I know we've been wanting to do a high-end episode for time. We do episodes where we get an outfit for 50 quid or, you know, we do customization. We do all these different types of episodes within fashion, but we haven't yet done a high-end episode. Me, I know um, about a few designers and a few brands, but I don't know as much as these guys, obviously. Fendi, you got McQueen, you got Margiela. You've got Rick, yep. you've got Raph. Yep. Yeah. You've got Calvin now with the Raph yeah. being a great director. You've got yeah. Burbs, so you've got Comme des Garçons. You've got Fred Perry. Yeah, got Fred Perry. Fred Perry. That. There is no budget. You could do anything as long as it's by that designer, whether it be runway, couture, ready to wear. Head to toe from that one designer, get our research in, come back with a fit. Right. Crack on. So this episode is luxury fits, high-end designers. So we each have to choose an iconic fashion house and we have to create a fit based solely on their garments. It's luxury time. Well, I'm outside Liberty's right now and today I'm going to be meeting up with their menswear buyer, Laura. I'm Laura, I'm the menswear buyer at Liberty. When it's high end, it generally like changes every season. Okay. It's like the, the buy can be completely different. So I'm gonna do something a bit different. I've been looking at a lot of anti-fashion stuff lately from the 90s, and the one brand that keeps coming up is Comme des Garçons. And that has led me to meet up with a good friend of ours called Detroit. I'm Detroit Law from Dam Dirty Duke. I've been collecting Comme des Garçons for about four years now. He can literally help me try on some outfits, hopefully enlighten me and give me some more knowledge about com. I mean, it was Ollie, who runs Oliver's Archive. Cheers, Danny, for coming around Thank to the show. Thank you for having me. It's inside a barber shop, but it's Ollie's own collection. So I'm outside of Westminster University. Welcome to the University of Westminster. I'm going to put my glasses on as well. Real education out here. 
So I'm going to be visiting their menswear archive. It's the first public menswear archive in the world. We've got a lot of different brands in the archive. We've got about 1,500 pieces. <laughs> what? <laughs> bands, bands, bands. That's a check talking. Ideally, what I think I want to do with the challenge is Mason Margiela, Maison Margiela. I know you guys have Margiela over there, but I'm not going to let that sway me. I'm going to try and look around, see all the other designers, see what we've got, and then I guess lastly land there. It's sick, man. I'm excited. I get a whole Liberty menswear floor to myself. Raw, that's a shutdown thing. I have myself of Gucci. Oh, he's got a few pieces that are very hard to come by. Louis V bags, the original Gucci bears. And yeah, hopefully I'll either learn something or if not, just see what he's got and see if I can incorporate some of his pieces into my outfit. All right, there. I mean, it's sick. I just wish it was Gucci. Yeah, looks a bit big for you. And uh, Comme de Garçon, where did it all begin? So it started with um, the chief designer, Ray Kawakubo, um, but she was doing styling jobs mm -hmm. where uh, she couldn't find garments to fit her kind of ethos and her style. And it's based around the concept of like boys, and that's what Comme de Garçon means in French. She never looks back as well, and that's part of the um, no longer making clothes, but making objects for the body. Daniel gave me a tour of the archive. I started off in the workwear. We're starting with the workwear and more utilitarian clothing. Immersion suits, so they're fully waterproof. Yo, this guy's ankle is crazy, man. Helmet Lang. I've worn this before. This definitely gets yeah. hot and uh, sweaty. The show that skept to walk the runway was Nazir Mazar. I think that's like a really hard piece. Versace shades, more Versace shades, Chanel aviators. I came here to learn today. Um, I guess I'm a student. So this aisle here is military. We've also got the more formal wear, which is the type of stuff that um, inspired people like Alexander McQueen. These are actually postcards from the Met exhibition. The whole thing with avant-garde, it takes fashion and it creates it into something else. It's like wearable art. Yeah, these cuts and stuff are crazy. It's kind of as well McDonald's. A lot of the pieces are challenging yeah. and they need to be tried on. Yeah, we talked a lot of designer, look through a lot of different Design. Shaq literally loves his hoodie. The amount of times I've seen him wearing a helmet. <laughs> this hoodie and the other t-shirt. <laughs> Laura, she's the lucky female that gets to fly around the world, go to the fashion shows, sees what they're debuting and choose what she wants in Liberty London. Like a shirt and a shirt, shirt oh, inception. Wow. Nerd level will be activated. But for real, what, what is this? That's is to it? give you more movement in, the, in your back. Common sense. <laughs> the Grail Rail. So these are the original Gucci monogram shirts. So this is when Tom Ford first came to Gucci and took it over, and he basically saved it from going bust. That is my personal favorite. I love the blue one. But this is a men's size large as well. So that is, you will never see another one like this. So this is the junior piece. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of like made out of a sort of techy, really stretched fabric. It's super sci-fi. Yeah, this looks mad. And then the tie-dye, yeah. Right, as a uh, tie-dye boys for life, bro. Yeah, man. This is what Ollie's saying is like the grill piece of this store, as this was worn by Princess Diana. Then we moved on to um, tailoring. Because you're interested in McQueen, I thought I'd show you some of the other tailoring pieces that probably inspired him. This is, this is from the glam rock uh, sort of collection. It makes my arms look nice and like muscular. Though. I was just going to say that. This is a frock coat from the late 19th century. Yeah. On Savile Row, McQueen was trained by tailors. So, you know, he, he identified with that. The rainbow puffer, <laughs> I can see it. You definitely need to try that. Ba -ba -veen, ba -ba -bam. Frock coat. Masonic, check it out. I'm gonna call myself Merc Boys. I can drive, but you know what? Don't have a Mercedes, but. <laughs> Damn, I'm a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't realize how much I've actually been missing this. Yeah. Like, this you is actually. I actually crazy. need it. <laughs> oh my god, I actually need one of these in my wardrobe. Why would you guys get this stuff? <laughs> All over. A lot of it is actually from eBay. eBay yeah. bangs. I'm telling you what. From episode one, I have told you guys, eBay bangs. eBay bangs. I went in there just thinking about Margiela, but then obviously Dries and Margiela went to the same school there. Dries has just completely done his own thing. So it, no, no two seasons are the same. He completely changed it up. See, I'm not used to the back hugging my chest like that. Yeah, you you know know I mean? like, yeah you're not used to wearing a shirt back to front. But I think that's the beauty and the simplicity of what the anti-fashion is, is it can be simple and it's things that are against the norm 
made to be the norm that not everyone would do because it's not fashion. If you get a stain on the front, you could just... Exactly, man. When it comes to tech where we all know he's that guy, CP, and obviously Stoney. Stoney! <laughs> massive, especially in the UK, massive. Went down, watched football, you know, England was playing, had a couple of pints, a little Stella Artois it. So just finished a little research session, sat down with uh, a laptop, went through a few uh, campaign videos. Ollie's shop was sick, like, there's some really nice pieces in there, but it was made like a Tom Ford kind of era. And I think for me, that's not the area that I want to go for. I want to go for more Alessandro, which is a bit more playful and fun. When we went over to Dreams, I was like, let me just try it on in it. The tracksuit and then a nice big overfur long coat on top. Sick. You look like a boss. Like it's proper. Rata bomba, rata bata shaba da bomba. Margiela might get snake for his Antwerp boy, you know. I'm looking at all the designers, but obviously, man, just bumped into the young black sections. So. Dreams hit the boy up, man. This is sick. Nah, Drees need to hit the boy up. I've got to show Drees that man's ready for the next catwalk, you get me? So this is a go to Oh, wow. Peace. You just look like a boss. I was just rolling through to the airport, just like, I'm ready. Yo, this is wham. Jeffrey, the private jet is ready. <laughs> I mean, I always loved Margiela so much, but Drees, I didn't expect to find this newfound love. Oh. Wow. Whoops. Oops. <laughs> didn't see that happen. No, it's all right. <laughs> so I was looking at all the different kind of things within the new Gucci, such as the Northern Soul campaign, which is fantastic. So like the sharp suits, and it's a very like Alessandro Gucci, where it is full of flowers and very bright, glittery. It's almost like a juxtaposition of new Gucci pieces, such as tracksuits, as well as the tailoring. It's showing the whole broad spectrum but they're all like a Northern Soul dance, which is notoriously just very like happy and such a good vibe. The harness armor piece to finish off your Burkine look. I'm not trying to limit myself. I want to try everything. There you go, man. Mad. Ready for Yo, battle. I thought I could body someone right now. <laughs> 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 Done. <laughs> why, why do you think Margiela is so iconic? It's just an amazing brand that's been around for so long and gone evolved through so many stages. John Galliano's at the helm and he really kind of takes each piece and as you say they have their staples but he takes yeah. each piece and like reconstructs it. It's like a backpack then it can also be a stool. Yo, I love backpacks. The more I looked at, the weirder it got and I feel like that is the Gucci that I want to go for. That woman's literally just wearing pants and got a tit so I might do that. Do you know what I love more than backpacks? Sitting down. Take this off my back and I've got a seat. So I'm willing to try anything and everything. Yes, man. This is mad. I feel like I want to teach you like Scottish country dancing. I won't. <laughs> Ollie's place was sick, but there wasn't really anything to see this side of Gucci, which just shows the diversity of the brand, which is why I'm very happy with choosing Gucci as a fashion house. This is the Magella trench coat. Yeah. Oh, that's sick, man. That trench coat is amazing. I love you, Burberry, but Magella, this trench coat is kind of sweeping you under the feet. <laughs> With the McQueen we see nowadays, it's a lot more commercial, but um, for me to understand him a bit more, I had to go back. Could you show me some Alexander McQueen, please? Yeah, sure. So like, the Gucci by Tim Walker and another man, all that like photo set was very um, like superimposed and like heavily photoshopped. Stuff like where it is this whole setting the scene where it's not just a lookbook for the clothes, it's selling a whole concept. So we've got probably about 25, 30 pieces of McQueen. He looked at the tailoring of clothes and you can see that he adapted it. He would add his flair to it, but at the same time, his tailoring skills were superb. So it's a tire print. Hold tight, Danny. Well, thank you so much okay. for, you know, walking around with me. It's really been good to get your insight as well. I'm definitely hyped about this. I'm definitely gonna have to try to borrow some clothes from Detroit. I mean, I appreciate it come before, but now I appreciate everything about it. The back of it had a slash. Looked like someone's, like someone's back it cut open. <laughs> a bit violent, but very artistic. So at the front, it looks pretty traditional, um, but then That's when you look at the back. It's whimsical, fantastical, magical, Alice in Wonderland, Alessandro in Wonderland kind of um, vibes. It's definitely opened my mind and I'm intrigued to learn so much more about him as a person. Navy and black, what 
say something now. So I'm feeling inspired. That is the Gucci that I want to go for. I'm going to be going mad looking at prints, looking at clashing, and just really trying to build something that just looks like a movie. So I'm going to see what I can get from Margiela, then weigh up what I want to do, and then either choose Dries or Margiela. Either way, Antwerp boys, let's get it. So welcome, Justin, to the Bomb Shelter, our studio. So my name is Justin O'Shea. I am the owner and designer of a brand called Triple S World Corp with, uh, with my business partner, Benny. So this episode is all about like luxury brands, so we have to be head to toe in high-end designer. So we've each chosen a different designer. I'm hoping that they embody the brands that they chose and they come out and they're confident and they're like, this is awesome. Without further ado, Danny, get the fuck up and let's go. Sweet. <laughs> What, the goggles? I had those. I had the sunglasses. When Danny first walked out, I was like, wow, this guy looks absolutely incredible. So my outfit is Alessandro because it is the one that you can get everything of, whereas archive pieces were literally a myth to get hold of. We viewed some Tom Ford Gucci, and they were cool, but I felt like that's not the Gucci that I think about. But I think of like Elton John kind of Gucci. I feel like Willy Wonka about to take you around and lead you through a dream, so I feel like... I probably really won't be taking your hand. I don't want to be led anyway, probably by you. <laughs> Especially in that I don't know where I'm going to end up. Like a crack den or something. It all complimented him so well. He looked like a million dollars. He looked like how Danny should dress. Like, literally, what Gucci is about is it's not... Even though it looks so special and it's like so wow, this is like literally his every day. Yeah. Like for him, this is the morning, the midday, breakfast, any time is yeah. Gucci time. <laughs> and, uh, you, know, you know, with Danny, any time is Gucci time. And the one thing I love about you and your fits is it's mad satisfying because you always get the break so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this, it's impossible not to like it. Well done, man. Cheers. Go party. Next. I will get changed. Wow, swaggering in, very, com <laughs> very confident. So when Elle first walked out, I had mad nostalgia, instantly thought of Big Bird. So I chose Maison Margiela, one of my favorite designers. Like, the thing I love about Margiela is how it's like deconstructed and then like elevated. So some something so simple will be elevated by like deconstructing things or adding things on, like all these like fur lines around the puffer jacket. And then I'm um, just wearing, you know, some wide leg trousers and their security sneakers as well. And I think, I'm pretty sure this collection was based around kind of like what John Galliano would throw on kind of in the morning before he was going for walks. In the early days with like the models, he couldn't afford to pay models, so he got, that's why they wore the Margiela mask, was because he couldn't afford to pay the models. So instead they just created these sick masks to cover up their face, <laughs> but added a whole other element which was super sick. What I liked was also learning a little bit, you know, hear him talk about Margiela. It's an easy choice yeah. because it's, uh, it looks exactly like you would what you would wear normal. I like it because it screams you. I feel like, yeah, top half is very Elise Riadi. I think the trousers are very Magnus Ronin. <laughs> oh my god, congrats. congrats. Thank congrats. you. Congrats. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. Pinstripes. Hello. In the comment on the shirt, man, I was like, that is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I mean, who wears that? So I went to Jack's University. So this is a pinstripe suit from Alexander McQueen. He is the designer I picked because it's quite into the dark side of things, and I'm quite similar. OK, first of all, flared pants. I mean, they are f***ing awesome. Totally did not expect you to come out in this. Me, I'm very into my black. I'm very into, like, that kind of approach. So when I looked into him, I know that he went through quite a stage. I was like, OK, I'm going to do that. It's still involving it on the colours, you know. Yeah, the colours are very nice. Got a kitty pair of I see your colours as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, we yeah, both, yeah. Uh, we yeah. both like the outfit yeah. life. Yeah. Segway to, spoiler alert, you're yeah. probably going to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Dexter looked sick, man. Honestly, like, you know, paying homage to my dude. Man, man was working out in the queen. This is like a ready to wear. It is really nice. I do feel like the trousers need to be like an inch or two longer. I know you usually, you know, question, question mine and Shaq's baggy trousers or flares, but honestly, it, it really does look great. Nice one, brother. Well done, yeah. golf club. <laughs> Let's go, buddy. Cool. I've <laughs> <laughs> never seen him walk out so serious in my life. I was crazy. Like, the Donny fully walked out like. The lining of the shorts are actually purposely done on the outside. So it looks like the shorts are inside out. The blaze at the back is completely cut out. You know what I mean? But for me, all of these things, these unique things, is the kind of stuff that I want to wear. So this is my favourite part. The print is actually Comme des Garçons and Jean-Michel Basquiat. Well done, because it's like styling Comme difficult. It could go equally as bad as it can go right. I thought choosing Comme de Garçon um, was a very intellectual decision. And it suits you. Oh, thank you. I really like it. I think the blaze is sick. I mean, like, for all the tees I have with back prints, I need one of those. I suppose you could call them creepers, because George Cox created the creeper. And then to have George Cox mixed with Com is sick. Like, that is a dream team. That's like a power duo. I'm the most boring dress person like in the world. I always wear the same thing. I just wear suits. You know, for me, it's like seeing that you're on like a whole other level of just like craziness. I think it all works like it works as it is. All right. That's fun. So uh, Gucci boy, you're wearing a serious outfit. And so to be able to pull that off, it takes a very special individual. And you, you actually do pull it off. Elias, the longer that I've seen you in it, the more I'm like, you chose really well. From not knowing you, I really feel like that's kind of like you every day. Man, Dax, I mean, buddy, you know, it's like, I gotta say, you look awesome. Like, you actually look different in your outfit, and this looks definitely like you're outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. Shaq, you are definitely, you really went for it. Buying into Com and, in, and knowing about the brand, it's like, if you, if you don't know how to, to represent it, then you're just another sucker on the street. You definitely went the, the furthest out there. So after a lot of deliberation, uh, sitting on this wooden chair, uh, the winner is... Dax. I don't come from a background of fashion, so I also like being around people that are just doing it because they love it. It's the same for them, and so I really think that it's cool what they're doing, so I had a great time. Tell me about it, tell me about it, come on. I also feel like you never win, so uh... <laughs> it was the other way around, he's not always bloody win. Comment who you think should have won. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for Sunday, which is our last of the four-part series with links. And yeah, catch you guys in four days.